Hey everybody, uh, trying out something new here, sort of like swim brief commenting on the news. It's going to be just me on this and uh, I'm recording a video and audio version of this to upload. Um, it's basically really a video, audio video essay um, commenting on some stuff that's going on in the news. It's been a lot of sort of hot button news in, in swimming this week. And uh, the goal here is to provide a little bit of context and express some ideas uh, I have around those two things. So to kick things off, um, a lot of people uh, have been texting me in the last few days uh, very specifically about Bill Wadley, um, who up until yesterday was the executive director at ASCA. Now, I, I already sort of threw an offhand comment in a blog uh, way back uh, a few months ago, you can find uh, maybe a link to as well, um, that, that I knew that uh, Bill Wadley was a bad choice for this position, but um, it turns out um, uh, I feel pretty confident I was right about that. Um, and very specifically, um, I want to point to the statement uh, that was made by ASCA's um, head board member, um, and that's uh, Mike Kolber, who gave, um, he's the board chair, he gave this uh, statement. And I'm just going to, I'm going to read part of it, uh, and then I'm going to read part of the article that Swim Swam did about Wadley. Okay. The hard-working staff at ASCA continues to do a phenomenal job. That's the first sentence, okay? Back to uh, Wadley. Swim Swam's public records request to the Columbus Police Department revealed at least nine different 911 calls to the house that uh, Wadley owned. Several of the calls have alleged domestic violence. In January 4th, 2020, a female caller accuses a man of putting his hands on her, choking her, and pulling her hair. Uh, in a November 4th, 2020 call, a woman accuses her live-in boyfriend, quote, Bill, of putting his hands on her, according to the 911 transcript. The very next day, another female caller accused live-in boyfriend, Bill Ladley, um, probably a mispronunciation of Bill Wadley, uh, on there. Now, we go back to Mike Kolber. Unprecedented times seem to be an understatement nowadays. Yet, they are as committed as ever to the mission. The production and delivery of valuable and relevant coaching resources have never been better. We're plowing forward for the coaches of ASCA, and we continue to be optimistic for the future. So in my opinion, this is a completely tone-deaf response by Mike Kolber. Um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, first off, there's absolutely no piece of this statement that even acknowledges the serious allegations against Bill Wadley. And if we put it even into a broader context, ASCA is an organization in a lot of turmoil right now. Okay, um, They finally got out from under... Um, John Leonard, who, um, you know, for ASCA critics like myself, um, that was a big deal. Um, I think that uh, John Leonard is one of the most corrupt and most damaging influences in the sport of swimming. So, um, and I know there's a lot of people that feel that way. Um, and he's somebody who, uh, very specifically, always, um, always managed to be on the wrong side of pedophile coaches. Um, and there's some crossover to how the organization is handling these uh, allegations against Wadley, in my opinion. Um, one of the things that uh, John Leonard said over and over again was that basically... Um, he would uh, 
he would defend any coach until there was some sort of legal judgment against them, you know, and I think people, uh, I hear people often say this, you know, I see people saying it in the comment section of the Bill Wadley article as well. They go, well, you know, what happened to innocent until proven guilty? Well, innocent until proven guilty is for the court system. Okay. Um, I would challenge anybody that's in a uh, workplace to um, first think about yourself in the workplace and think about a news article coming out like the one that was written about Bill Wadley where, I mean, this is, um, <laughs> this is not a conjecture. This is public records that they found. Um, and ask yourself, would you be just allowed to continue working uh, as, as if nothing had happened the next day? And um, second, put yourself um, in the position of an employer, okay? Maybe you're not the boss at your work, okay? But like, uh, I'm a parent and um, I'm a kid. If, uh, and I'm sorry, I have kids. You know, like, if I had a babysitter and this was a news article about my babysitter, would I be in my right to fire my babysitter? Or should I just wait until um, legal judgment is reached? Um, so, you know, people can make their own judgments about this. And I, I think ASCA would be better served saying, look, we, um, we screwed up by hiring Bill Wadley. But it seems like Mike wants to avoid addressing that. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, he's, uh, for people that, again, don't have the context of him, he's the owner of Nitro Swim Club. So he's run this playbook before. He's, he was uh, the owner of the club when Tim O'Brien was banned for life from coaching swimming and um, he had a similar response or a forward-looking response um, but uh, I don't think that he's uh, serving people very well with just a forward-looking response you got to be reflective uh, about the decisions that you're making because this stuff is really important um, you know I'm not a member of ASCA so surprise surprise um, but I am an American swim coach and one of the things I've been learning more and more over uh, the past few years is how important an organization ASCA is. In fact, I just recorded a podcast that's going to go up next week with my boss, Paul Donovan. And one of the things he speaks to is, uh, especially as somebody from outside of the U.S., how important ASCA is. I mean, it, it really, it's the American Swim Coaches Association, but it's, it's an international organization. And it, um, it's, uh, it's a massive Organization, it has massive influence and reach, and so this stuff is actually really important, whether I like it or not. And um, as long as I call myself a swim coach, something I plan on doing for the rest of my uh, life, it's really important who's in charge of this organization and what kind of leadership they're providing. Um, you know, I think if you look at the ASCA board right now, it's really interesting. Like if you get on swimmingcoach.org and go click through to their board. Of course, I had Megan Esting on my podcast a few weeks ago. I continue to talk to her. I think highly of her. Um, there's definitely some other names on there. Um, some uh, quote unquote new blood um, in the ASCA board. But there's plenty of old blood too. And there's plenty of people there who have exhibited really bad judgment uh, in terms of their hiring decisions or who they choose to promote. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, again, I would like ASCA to be self-reflective in this moment, provide a little bit of transparency um, at how they screwed this up. And I'm really curious to see what they do next. Um, you know, because this will be their coming up, I think, you know, whoever they hire to replace Wadley, that's going to be, that's going to be their fourth director in a very short period of time. Um, and I really hope that they go outside of the swimming coach world. They sort of did that with Steve Roush. Um, 
it was more of uh, somebody on the business side, executive side of it. Um, but you know, focus on the core of what it is uh, they provide, which is, um, or what they could provide, I should say, because uh, I have some issues with what they do provide. But you know, um, educational resources, uh, networking for coaches, advocacy for coaches uh, in the sport of swimming. And um, they really need somebody who's uh, not uh, just sort of, you know, got the, got the right relationship with uh, Matt Kredich at all um, to lead this organization. And I just want to transition from this story to another by giving a lot of credit to Swim Swam. I've been a Swim Swam critic as well. Um, in fact, I just wrote a blog post uh, about how uh, awful uh, the comment section on Swim Swam is. I still believe that's true. I still think um, I would love to see you, uh, uh, sorry, Swim Swam come in and really regulate their comment section better um, because I think it, it really especially when they publish articles like the one they did about Wadley, um, it, 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 it poorly serves uh, the people that are reading it. There's still far too many eyes on the comments and uh, it blurs a line between what's commentary and what's actually news. That's it. The piece that they put together about Bill Wadley earlier this week about the 911 calls and uh, the fact that a man was murdered at his property um, and the uh, article they did on uh, Cleet Keller being a part of the insurrection at the Capitol, uh, bravo. And I just want people to understand that, uh, you know, the kind of journalism that they did there takes a lot of time and work, okay? Um, they, it's, it's very, very obvious that they spent quite a bit of time buttoning up those articles, crossing all their T's, dotting all their I's, um, making records requests, uh, talking to sources, confirming things. So um, I just want to applaud them for that because I think uh, both articles were really important and especially... Um, you know, the Wadley article in the context of here's somebody heading up this incredibly uh, influential coaching organization. And the Cleet Keller story, you know, is one of those, unfortunately for people in the swimming world, it's one of those stories that has broken through uh, onto the national plane. And um, they just did a really good job of uh, providing context for that story. Um, and you can color me as one of the people on it. I mean, I guess on some level, the Bill Wadley article bums me out too. Um, as much as I just want to purely tear into him because I think he's done a lot of horrible, horrible things and I'm not saying he hasn't. Um, and I think that aside from the uh, uh, potential domestic abuse and whatever else has, has gone on at his house, um, I just think, you know, I, I didn't think highly of him as a coach. Uh, and I always thought he was sort of like an inside guy that, um, that, that uh, frankly, he, he dragged the sport down. Um, but, you know, the Keller stuff, uh, just reading about, you know, a guy who's lost custody of his kids and uh, just sort of uh, went down a really, to a really dark place with his mental health and all that. And I, I see people online going like, well, you know, we don't usually get this much context of somebody that breaks the law. And I just want to stop and say, okay, but are you saying we should just dehumanize all people that break the law? Is that your position? Or um, are you saying we should get more context on other people who um, do bad things? And I would trend more to the, to the latter. Um, again, I think it's horrible. Also what Cleet Keller did, I guess that's a political statement. Uh, to some people, but for me, it's a uh, basic common sense. So uh, I don't feel bad about saying that. But it, but I can, I can think that at the same time as um, have some empathy for him as a human being, just where he is, um, because I know it's, uh, I know it's a, uh, it, it seems like a really deep, dark place. 
Um, all right, to, to finish on a lighter note, uh, <laughs> another completely non-swimming thing, but as a, as a Danish person uh, living in America, many, many people have, um, I don't get it, at least a dozen people have emailed or texted me in the last week uh, because there is a new Danish kids TV show about a man with a giant penis. And uh, the reactions have ranged from kind of curiosity to a little bit of horror to people who thought it was really funny. And I just, I haven't watched the show, so I can't tell you uh, what I think, but I just, to give you some broader cultural context for it, um, I'll say this. Um, first off, understand that uh, uh, in comparison to Americans, Danish people are way less sheepish about the human body and nudity and all of that. In fact, the last TV show for Danish kids that people were all messaging me about was one in which uh, kids that were like 11 to 13 years old, they would bring three average adults out on the stage, the adults would strip down naked, and the 11 to 13 year olds would ask some questions about their body. Um, and this is something like you would never see on American TV, but the, 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 and this is on Danish public kids TV. And the goal behind it was, you know, kids are inundated um, with all sorts of unrealistic uh, images of what naked bodies look like. And it was basically like a form of, you know, body education for kids. So that, that, that put that in there to sort of provide context for how, um, Danish culture writ large sort of looks at the human body so they're not they're not feeling um, to a large extent uh, that conflicted that said um, this particular show has faced actually some strong criticism in Denmark and that's because um, Denmark is going through uh, uh, quite a uh, dramatic me too reckoning at the moment um, you know, in the past uh, six months, there have been a number of high-ranking media figures that have had to resign from their jobs, uh, high-ranking political figures. The, the mayor of Copenhagen, who um, was like the number two official in the leading um, uh, political party in, in Denmark, had to resign over allegations of sexual harassment um, and sort of sexual impropriety in the workplace. So um, there is there is some discussion in Denmark that like, you know, how how funny is it really a guy getting into mishaps with his giant penis? Um, you know, are we promoting a uh, culture of uh, sexual harassment and sort of inappropriate behavior by men? Um, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into that. Uh, th this part of the piece was just more to give you a little bit of context and uh, hopefully a little bit of laugh um, about what's going on in Denmark. Um, uh, if you like this uh, segment, uh, shoot me a note. If, you, um, if you're Mike Culver and you want to come talk to me and tell me why I'm completely wrong about you, um, happy to have that conversation. Don't expect that it will happen. Um, and uh, for everybody else, uh, hope you enjoyed and talk to you soon.